Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well. We're going to be looking at question number 8 on our 2008 Euclid paper. So let's take a look here. So I got two parts, both written. Points A, B, C, and D are arranged as shown, with A, B parallel to D, C. And P is the point of intersection of A, C, and B, D. Okay. Also, AC equal uh, ACB is 90 degrees. AC and is equal to CB. Okay, so it's a nice little right angle triangle, an isosceles equal, uh, right angle triangle. And AB equals BD, and they're both 2. Determine the measure of DBC, this, this little angle right here. Okay. So we don't have, I'm noticing there's a distinct lack of things talking about P. None of the extra information we're given involves P. So I wonder how P is going to work here. Hmm. I'm also noticing that if I connect up AD, I will get a second isosceles triangle. Hmm. Things to think about. Okay, uh, let's copy this into our notepad, make it kind of big. I mean, it might just be that P exists in some fashion, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it just it forces D to be on this side of C. I don't know yet. Got a right angle here. I am going to first switch colors. I am going to connect up A and D. Okay, and then we've got uh, P there. And because A C and B C are equal, whatever they might be, we know we've got two here. And so, <clears throat> if we have an isosceles right angle triangle, both of these sides are x. 2x squared is going to be 2 squared. So, dividing by 2 on both sides, x squared is going to be 2. So, both of these are root 2. Not only that, because it's isosceles, I can drop this perpendicular down. And this is going to be 1, this is going to be 1. And more importantly, the distance between these two parallel lines is one, and that might be important in some way. Okay. Um, there isn't a whole lot you need to, to say to justify this. I mean, the quick Pythagorean theorem on the side, uh, you might say, you know, A, B, C is isosceles. So we get a perpendicular bisector. Okay. Uh, but other than that, I mean, we mostly just have some basic length calculations here. Okay. Uh, what else is there? I haven't used the AD despite adding it in. Uh, this is 45 degrees. CBA is 45 degrees. If I could figure out DAB, DBA, then I could just subtract it away and get the angle that I want, which I guess I will put in blue. So I want this angle here. The only question is, how do I figure it out? Uh, oh. This isn't bad at all, because this is 2, and then this is, yeah, so we've got 2 here. I still do not know what P is doing there, but that's fine. So because they're isosceles, I can... Now, wait, wait, hmm. Oh! So I thought I had it there, because they're isosceles, and I could figure out uh, these angles here, but I can't without this length AD. I can, however, um, 
just put this one down here with purple. If I drop this perpendicular, call this maybe E, then I can say, well, e, 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 DE is 1, this is the same height. And why is that? Well, since the lines are parallel, the distance between stays the same. And now that I've got this 90 degrees, I've got a, I've got a, a 30, 60, 90 triangles. Two, one, this will end up being root three. But because of that, I will get 30 degrees here. And that tells me the remaining uh, angle here is 15 degrees. So we just need to, you know, write that up a little bit. What I might say is something like triangle B, D, E is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. People do know what this means when they're marking. So angle D, B, E is 30 degrees. The angle that we want, which is uh, C, D, B, C. So angle D, B, C is angle uh, A, B, C minus angle uh, D, B, A. which is 45 degrees because it's an isosceles right angle triangle minus 30 degrees because it's 30, 60, 90 triangle and therefore 15 degrees. But the important thing, because it's a written question, is we do have to show our work. So, you know, we've justified the 30, 60, 90 triangle and that came from figuring out the height, which came from the fact that uh, it's an isosceles right angle triangle. So there's not a whole lot going on there. Not really any complicated trick. Didn't need DA, also didn't need point P. That is that, that's what makes me the most worried is that this wasn't really used. But then again, we didn't have a whole lot of information given to us uh, about point P either. I think it's just for like, really pedantic people who say, well, what, what, you know, just because the, the, they, they say it's set up like this, who's to say D isn't over here on this side and causing problems like that. They're guaranteeing that AC and BD intersect, so, so uh, uh, D must be closer to A than, than C is, is, is sort of what they're saying. But yeah, there we go, that's, that's A, and what have we got to do here in B? In the diagram, ABC is a right-angled triangle with P and R on AB, also Q is on AC, and PQ is parallel to B. B, C. Well, if we've got a right angle here, then surely we have right angles here as well. If RP is 2, BR is 3, and BC is 4, I see a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Not if, uh, I'm not sure if that's going to help, but there we go. Uh, and the area of QRC is 5. Nifty. Uh, determine the length of AP. So we want this length here. I might give it a name X. All right, well, let's copy this picture into our notebook. Oops. There we go. There we go. We'll just leave a bit more space this time. So I have a bit more room to write. I didn't write, really write a whole lot last time. So C up here. We've got B. We've got A. Right angle there, Q is up here, P, and then we'll put R here. So we got two here, three, four, we know this area here is five. Now the areas make me think that I should break down uh, the, the area of A, B, C in a couple different ways. Because I, I can get this area fine here, this area here, and I will call this X. Um, and we've got, uh, so we might start saying something like uh, 
let a p equal x. Uh, now, uh, we are told in the question QP is parallel to BC. So that means that QP is also going to be perpendicular to AB. So we get a nice little perpendicular line there. Okay. Now, we have the height over here and the base we can figure out. So uh, uh, the area of triangle ABC is one half base times height. But that's going to be one half five plus X times four. And that's just going to be uh, two times five plus X or 10 plus 2x. Okay, so that's so we've got the, the whole area. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down in terms of these triangles here. And, you know, this, this one here is 5. That's fine. This one here is going to be 3 times 4 divided by 2, so it's going to be 6. Not really a problem there. But it's these other two. We have their bases, 2 and x, but their height. Well, I don't know what their height is exactly. But... I see we've got some similar triangles we can play with. So we'll say something like uh, uh, AQP is similar to... You want to make sure you get the, the letters corresponding correctly. So I've got the right angle a letter last here, and they do share this common uh, angle here at A. So I can say something like AP over QP, this height that I don't have, is this, that has the same ratio as AB, this base that we've, uh, we've been working with, to the height CB. So that's X over whatever QP is, is the same as 5 plus X over 4. Or if I rearrange this, <coughs> I'll get... Um, Uh, 4x over 5 plus x is equal to qp. Just cross multiplying there. Okay, so I've got this height here. And now, because I've got the height and the bases, I can get the, the other two triangles. And now I can break down uh, abc in two different ways. So we know 10 plus 2c is the area of ABC, but that's also the area of uh, C R B plus the area of C R Q plus the area of R Q P plus the area of A P Q. And so that's one half four times three plus, they just gave it to us, it's 5, plus 1 half 2 times this height that we have here, so that's 4x over 5 plus x, plus 1 half x, 4x over 5 plus x. Uh, so 6 and 5, that's 11. The half and the 2 will cancel out. And then we'll get 4x squared up on top here, and 2 times 5 plus x is 10 plus 2x. So I'm going to multiply by 10 plus 2x on both sides. I'll get 100 plus 40x plus 4x squared is equal to 110 plus 22x plus 8x plus 4x squared. Now these 4x squareds are going to cancel. Uh, I'll be left with 30x over here and 110 over here. 40x here, so we'll get um, 110 minus 100 is 10. 40x minus 30x is 10x 
And so pretty quickly we get x is 1. I thought for a second when we saw these quadratics that I might have uh, sort of two possible answers for x, and I'd have to discard one of them because it's uh, a negative length. But no, uh, the 4x squareds actually happen to cancel out, and x is just going to be 1, and that's, that's going to be our length. So not a whole lot to say. I mean, you could put a little therefore statement, AP has length 1, but I don't really think we need it. And uh, that wraps up question number 8 for us. We've got two more questions to go, 9 and 10, uh, and then we'll finish up this, this Euclid paper. Uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to like or subscribe uh, if you want to be kept up to date in terms of when I'm posting these things. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you've done this question or indeed any of the, the this Euclid's questions differently. I always like seeing different solutions. And, you know, if you want to, even just leave a comment saying, hey, I love it when people say, hey, plenty of people do. Uh, but that's going to be it. I will see you in the next video for question number nine. Until then, take care and have a wonderful day.